Musk gave over an hour of his time during the X takeover. So one thing I did want to comment is actually the X takeover is actually you're you're coming through Starlink right now. So all the work that SpaceX is doing, uh, it's all through Starlink. Yeah, well, it's Starlink here too. It's, it's Starlink, Starlink, <laughs> Starlink connecting Starlink. He attended virtually, and the interview was conducted through Starlink on both ends. But we got some information about the next Starship flight that I wanted to share with you. From a standpoint of when Starship will be ready, it's probably probably is about two or three weeks. But uh, then, then depends on when we get the FAA license. It's probably end of August is my guess earliest, um, and it may go to early September. Just depends on on how fast the FAA grants our license. Elon says while Flight 4 was an incredible success, they need the heat shield to be fully intact and to land the ship in the right location for this next flight. They were really close on the last one, but they need high reliability of the heat shield and flaps that can steer to a precise location. And for you, what does success look like? I know there's the idea of literally um, using the chopsticks to capture this. Is is that still the goal? Is that, is that what success would look like? We would like to catch the, mecha, the, the booster in the giant mechazilla arms, which is, sounds kind of insane because this is, the, the, this is the largest flying object ever made. So to catch it with, you know, giant robot arms is, um, you know, pluck it out of the sky is, is pretty insane. But I think we've got probably a 50% chance-ish of catching the booster and then probably, probably better than 50%, maybe 60, 70% chance of the ship uh, heat shield remaining intact on this upcoming flight, assuming nothing else goes wrong. He says before they bring the ship back to the launch site, they'd like to see three successful landings of the ship. The, the, the ship uh, landing is the tough part, uh, meaning like that's because the ship has a heat shield and it's really designed to survive entry, not not to sort of vaporize. <laughs> um, it comes down very much intact. And so we need to make sure that for the ship that the reliability of the heat shield is extremely high and that the, the flaps uh, that and that it can steer to a very precise landing location um, because if it were to break up of a you know populated area that's some possibility of debris hitting um, you know damaging property or, or, or people and so we want to be really confident that the ship um, heat shield is super robust and lands at the exact right location. And for the next flight, the heat shield is substantially upgraded. Um, I'd say it's at least twice as good. Well, in some cases, like infinitely better, um, and has a secondary heat shield behind the primary heat shield. I think it's it's got a decent chance of working. Uh, might take a, take a few kicks at the can before it's actually <laughs> before it works well. Um, but it's like, we're not breaking physics, so success is one of the possible outcomes here. <laughs> Elon predicts about a 50% chance of catching the booster and about 60% of the ship's heat shield remaining intact. There were also a lot of Starlink minis that I saw at the X takeover, some of them mounted on cyber trucks. Elon reminds us that Starlink mini is not as good as the regular dish but because it can fit in a backpack, it is a good backup for emergency responders. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's like you, you give up a little bit of uh, antenna area um, for, uh, but, but it's, it's extremely portable. So it's like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the weight of the regular one, but, and, and, and you'll get about half the bandwidth. So it's, 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 it's sort of, it's power to weight. It's like ability to weight ratio is, is quite, is really good. It's, um, and then, yeah, you can just put in a backpack, take it anywhere you want. Uh, I think it'd be pretty, pretty good as a sort of a backup device for emergency services. Um, so um, actually, a, a lot of sort of first responders and emergency services are, you know, looking at having that as just, um, just because it's so easy to just put on a vehicle. In fact, I know people have put it on Teslas, which is pretty cool. Um, like, <laughs> we have cyber trucks here with them, literally stationed on them. Te shout out to Tesla Tino and some of the other ones. Yeah, but I think like the Sonic, the Sonic money, especially is because it's so portable and, and easy to, to put in places. Uh, it's just great for uh, emergency services or if there's like, you know, forest fires, floods, natural disasters, um, which take out, you know, where you lose the ground fiber and you lose the uh, cell towers. 
then you still have uh, access to the internet with the Starlink. Now back to Starship. Between each flight, there are hundreds, if not thousands of changes to the ship, the booster, and the launch site. Uh, you got really talented teams at SpaceX working on the, the stage zero, which is like the, uh, the launch site. Um, and stage zero is as important as stage one and two. Uh, so you, the stage one being the booster, stage two being the, the ship. Um, so man, it's, it's, there's so many, it'll be, it, it, and, and a lot of them would, it, people wouldn't, if I got into the details of it, people would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's gonna be, a, <laughs> well, it's gonna be like a, like a little valve here and a, a line change here and a routing, a wiring routing change there and a bunch of tweaks to the software. And so it's, it's a whole bunch of things that, that are not like uh, as easy to describe as upgrading the heat shield. Um, and remember, 14,000 brilliant minds work behind the scenes at SpaceX. About 3,100 or so are working down at Starbase. And Elon says there's a much more significant change coming in a few launches from now. He says Ship 7 will have the forward flaps move more toward the rear. He says this was a design mistake that was bugging him with the ship. They're correcting the forward flaps. They were symmetric with the rear flaps, where the forward flaps are at 180 degrees. And you really actually want the forward flaps to be um, kind of in the lee of the wind. Um, this is, I, 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 I'm cautious about getting into too much technical detail that, that maybe doesn't uh, make sense if you don't know about like rock. <laughs> now, Elon said he didn't want to get too technical, but picture it kind of like a skydiver steering themselves. That steering would be much different than a plane, for example. The forward flaps, you really don't want the forward flaps to be visible to the airflow because the you're really trying desperately to not, to not have the engine side uh, rotate forward and get into the hot plasma. So the, the with I think it's shift seven, the, 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 the forward flaps get smaller and they, they kind of go, they rotate back, I mean, their, 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 their hinge position, instead of being at 180 degrees, is like, I don't know, maybe 150 degrees or so. The, the forward flaps are really just used as trim flaps. So they basically, in a nutshell, they, they, the, the flaps get smaller and lighter, the payload improves, and then, then there's continued improvements to the heat shields, uh, the engines get, get, get better. So we're able to run the engines at higher thrust with more reliability. He also gave a Raptor engine update, and this change will lighten the ship. A, a really big step change will be maybe in in the next year or something like that, uh, where we get rid of the base heat shield and the ship heat shield, uh, the, the, the engine the engine side heat shield. So the, the engines are do not need to be encapsulated with the the, the next big revision of the Raptor engine, which, which is quite tricky. But but that that eliminates a lot of mass at the base of the vehicle and at the base of the ship. Uh, but, but basically the ship and the booster both um, get a lot lighter and the engines are more robust. Um, and, and, and then also the, the, the payload will be comfortably above 100 tons to a useful orbit. Um, so 100 tons to useful orbit with full reusability where the, the booster and the ship come back to the launch site means that the cost per ton to orbit is I don't know, maybe about 100 times less than it has been in the past. Um, and this, this is what would enable uh, life to extend beyond Earth and, and to, to build a self-sustaining city on Mars, which would maximize the probable lifespan of consciousness um, by, I don't know, many millennia, if not millions of years. So I hope that you enjoyed this quick Starship conversation with Elon Musk. Elon was in a great mood and gave us some amazing details at the X takeover. We also heard from Jared Isaacman in person. You guys think about this. He's about to do the Polaris Dawn launch. So he's going to be doing the first private commercial spacewalk in just a few weeks. So it was incredible to have him there. I'm going to be making another video showing you some more of my conversation because I led a panel about SpaceX and I'll also show you some of the cool people that I met at the X takeover. But I wanted to share with you what Elon said because I know so many of us are anticipating anticipating the next flight, Flight 5. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.